The Center for Urban Agriculture is a conceptual high-rise farm designed for the Cascadia Green Building Council's 2007 Living Future Competition. It offers the means to work and live entirely in the heart of a city. The building aims for self-sufficiency, generating nearly all of its energy, collecting rainwater, growing food for local distribution, and providing quality compact residences made from retrofitted shipping containers. One of the challenges of this conceptual project was to live within the means of the resources that fall on the site. So how much rain falls every year on the site and can we utilize that rain to supply 100% of the building's water needs? Same with energy. How much energy falls every year on the site and can we design the building so that we use only that energy and no more? How do we collect enough energy to supply the building annually? One of the things we wrestle with in a city like Seattle is a supply and demand issue. So we have we can generate a ton of energy using PV cells during the summer, but not a whole lot in the winter when we need it most. So one of the things we tried is to create a closed loop system that utilizes hydrogen, the increasing efficiencies of, of that conversion to store energy for winter use. There's some real opportunities to connect people to the systems that sustain us in a new urban environment. So we can actually see the water tanks. We might even be walking between the water tanks at the street level. We'd be adjacent to the photovoltaic panels that were collecting the solar power. We'd be uh, walking past the restaurant that was serving the food from the roofs above. So there's a lot of opportunities to connect people with uh, um, these food systems and these um, ecological systems that are part of our, the new city topology. It's really important for urban residents to be around natural amenities to biodiversity, the innate connection we have with the natural environment. Uh, Methune is also working on a number of community garden parks that give people access to, um, to the land and to, to gardening. There's a huge demand for this and more than the city can provide and this is another vehicle for how to give people access to that gardening opportunity and really um, the biological connections that we have with that experience. And we're not just talking about providing green space, we're talking about really enhancing the ecological function of the urban environment. So uh, this project is, is adding all sorts of uh, agricultural biodiversity elements, uh, ecosystem function elements. A good example of that is providing habitat for pollinators, which has been shown to have huge economic impacts to our regional food system, to our urban environments, and to our rural environments. So one of the biggest impacts that people have on the environment is really where their food is coming from. It's not something we think a lot about, but it has huge impacts. Some studies say up to 40% of our carbon footprint in the U.S. Is, comes from um, food uh, sources. So it's the raw materials that it takes to produce that food, the transport of that food, and the packaging of the food. And uh, is it coming from down the street or is, in the local farms, or is it coming from halfway across the world? Our urban environments are growing it really, really rapid rates right now. It's been estimated that by 2020, roughly 60% of the world's population will live in cities. We're bringing all these people to our urban environments, but we're not bringing the things that sustain us. I think we need to look at new um, models, new topologies. What, what does our city look like when we know um, the popu urban population is growing and what can, how can we introduce people to that in a way that they're excited about, that gets them enthusiastic about you know, being part of that system. Originally slated to become a parking garage, this site has the potential to reduce cars downtown by taking advantage of existing transit within easy walking distance. It's immediately adjacent to the Metro Bus Tunnel Terminus and near the light rail station that connects Seattle to SeaTac Airport. The monorail station that links downtown to the Seattle Center and surrounding neighborhood and the streetcar line serving the emerging South Lake Union neighborhood. Transit-oriented development adds not only a reduction of our carbon footprint but also a liveliness and an activity to the street level that's part of the vitality of urban living. Methune's very interested and has been working quite a bit on 
workforce housing and modular housing, and we have a number of projects throughout the region that are utilizing work, uh, modular housing construction techniques. In Seattle, we import way more than we export, and we end up with a huge collection of unused shipping containers. And we can take this uh, affordable, local, recycled material, assemble them off-site with uh, infrastructure, with insulation, with interior detailing, and ship those to our site, load them onto a superstructure that we've designed, and create housing that way. Why would you want to live in a shipping container? Good question. That's one of the big challenges of this project. And we feel that, in the end, you won't feel like you're living in a shipping container that this isn't about creating typical American housing. This is a new modern way of living. This is uh, building a new community in an urban environment.